Hello, I'm Olaf Barr, Director of Live Technology here at Grass Valley, a Belden brand. This is a brief discussion on the setup and use of the K2 Dyno and K2 Summit for six times super slow motion record and playback. To begin, let's take a look at the back of the K2 Summit for the connections. What we're looking at here is four channels, channel one, channel two, three, and four. For 6x Super Slow Mo, if we're using three phase camera, which we are, we're going to use the first three inputs, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Then we're going to go to the second channel, and we're going to use also for another 6x Super Slow Motion camera, phase one, phase two, and phase three. So that would be the next three connectors. In the event that you're going to use a multi camera as well as a 6x Super Slow Motion, on the second channel, you're probably only going to use the first two connectors for those two standard cameras. Now for the output, we're going to jump down to the third channel, and we're going to use the second to last output, which is your clean, and a superimposed character, which is the dirty. So you have a clean and a dirty for those two outputs. And then if you jump down to the fourth channel, you can do the same. When connecting black, make sure you're using black burst and not tri-level. Then use a terminator if you're not going to loop it anywhere else. For your connection to the dyno, you're going to use the lower left port for the control connection. And if this is intended to be used with multiple servers and you want to use the media connection, such as ShareFlex, you're going to use the upper left port for the media connection. You have two USB ports here that are utilized for the keyboard and mouse. The front ports on the K2 Summit are USB 3.0 and should be utilized if you're going to use USB drives for transferring of media. You can use the VGA port for setup use or the quad split that we provide in the K2 Summit. If not, you're going to use those clean and dirty ports uh, for connection on a multi-viewer. In the event that you need to reseat the power supply, make sure you unplug both power sources, then pull the tab and slide it out and slide it back in with a nice solid press so you hear that click. Once App Center opens up, we see on the left-hand side the four channels that we're going to be using, and on the right-hand side is the library. For our configuration tool, we're going to go to the upper left-hand corner to System pull-down menu and select Configuration. The first tab, the System tab here, is the reference we want to make sure that it's both present and locked. Again, this is black burst and not tri-level. For time of day source, you can use either way the system clock or change that as well to LTC, your choice. When we go to the channel tab, we're actually going to select the channel one. Again, this is the three phases coming in for 6x super slow motion. So the super slow motion setting that we're selecting, we're just checking that we're making sure that we're using the super slow motion recorder. Then we can choose if it's not set to 6x, we can then set it by making that choice. And one thing that we want to note here is that on our recorder setup, we're using 1080i or 720p, your choice. We're using AVC Intro 100. You also have a choice of DVC Pro. But also on your video input, you'll want to make sure that these three are lit green. Uh, this way we verify that we have all three phases present to make this 6x happen. For the second channel, we can choose from uh, multi-cam recorder, which we have set up here, or we could also change it back to super slow motion. But since we're going to use the multi-cam recorder, we can go ahead and choose from our input selections as well and also make sure that under our video input that we have present video on both of these channels. For our playout channel, we're using channel three and channel four. For these, we want to go down and look at our output setup. And we're just going to verify that we're in the true output format that we require. So if this was 1080i in and we wanted to use 1080i out, we would make that selection here. Let's say on channel four though, we could make that selection to utilize on the output that we wanted to utilize 720p instead we can make that selection. So now we could actually utilize 1080i and 720p output at the same time, even though we're recording 1080i in. Once we're done with that, hit the OK button, the changes will be made, and we're ready to start a session. On the dyno, we're going to connect to the summit that we want, and we're going to create a new session. We're going to select what our loop length is. Uh, in this case, I have it set for two hours. Uh, but then also we're going to select if we're going to have one or more super slow mos or standard cameras and then how many player channels that you want. So in this case, I have it set up for one 6x super slow-mo in and two playout channels. Uh, that's what I'm going to use. Then I'm going to hit start. On the dyno, the most important setup is on the home screen for the T-bar. So here we're going to actually set where the landing pad is for 17%. So I'm going to pull the T-bar up a little bit and kind of feel like that's where I think I'm going to start my 17%. And then if I move the T-bar again, that's where I'd like the top part of the 17% to be. So this is my range. This is the landing pad for 17%.
In most events, it's the actual sport that dictates if I'm going to have a high range or a low range for playback speed that's outside of that super slow-mo 6x speed. So in this case, I'm going to set it up to play back a high range. So there's still my top is up there is 100%. I'm going to move the T-bar down to here and I'm going to say set there for the top of my 17%. So here I have a very small area landing pad to hit the 17% because a lot of the replay that I'm gonna do is from 18 all the way up to 100%. So I have a very large range now to finesse all those different speeds of 18 to 17. The same goes that if I wanna set up the bottom end and have a large range from 17 to zero. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna be the top and I'm gonna set that there and maybe pull this down and have my 17% be right about there. So now I have, again, a very small window for 17%, a smaller window for 18 to 100. But look at this range from 17 down to zero. I have a lot of room to play with. So if my sport dictates that I need to be able to handle a larger range of super slow-mo, this is where we're gonna play in. We've also found that 9% seems to be our favorite spot for showing off speeds slower than 17%. So what I'd like to do is set up a preset if I go back to the home screen, come to my function play button, and change it to 9, and hit OK. Now every time I play the clip back, I can just hit function play, and it'll play back at that 9%. So even whatever the range is that I'm playing with in my T-bar, I might be able to finesse some replays there. But the 9% is always available if I just hit function play. It'll play back at that speed. To spend a little bit more time on the finessing of a playback of super slow motion is that I don't want to just take my T-bar from 100% and slam it down into 17%. Uh, same goes that if I lift it off, I don't want to just go from zero or even 17% and quickly ramp it up. You do want to finesse the playback of the T-bar. You want to push it gently and smoothly. And the reason being is if you look at this graph, you can see that if I'm playing something back at 90% and then pull it down to 17, there's a dramatic drop off. It really is how the system sees it. It goes from 90 to 17 in just a beat. What you want to do is if you look at this nice curve, it goes from 90% to 17% in an arc. And that's because I'm pulling the T-bar down in a nice gradual motion. And this is the user influencing what the video actually plays back. Remember, a system really plays with zeros and ones as far as information is concerned. So if you pull that T-bar back quickly, it will just drop off to that immediate playback speed that you're telling it to. But if you do it gradually, you'll get nice, smooth playback. A good way to differentiate a clip that is a 6x clip from the other ones is that you'll actually see it says S6 or Speed 6. Another great feature of the K2 Dyno is the fact that you get to use those 6x video clips, the same as you would any clip in the K2 Dyno. For more great instructional tutorials on how to use the K2 Dyno or the K2 Summit, please visit the Grass Valley website.